Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with a Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on July 7th, 2023, recorded on 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the new Colorado State University forecast. The tropical cyclone numbers have been increased for this year and a look at what's occurring in the eastern Pacific Basin. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, it is relatively quiet out there across the basin. There's a lot of dry, stable air out there, as we would expect for the month of July. That's indicated here where my cursor is by these orange colors right here. This is a lot of dry, stable air associated with the Saharan air layer. We do have a pretty decent tropical wave that is going to be approaching the Antilles and is approaching the Lesser Antilles right now. We'll talk about that in greater detail here in a second. And in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we have Invest Area 93E, which is located right here where my cursor is. This is likely to become a tropical storm or hurricane over the next couple of days while staying well away from mainland Mexico. Looking here at a tropical wave that is approaching the Lesser Antilles right now. This wave today is fairly well defined. You can see a lot of convective activity, shower and thunderstorms with it this morning. This is going to be affecting places like Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, St. Lucia, Martinique, Dominica, Guadeloupe, and probably up towards Antigua and Barbuda over the next couple of days. This tropical wave isn't moving all that fast, but will bring some inclement weather to portions of these areas over the next couple of days. And then eventually, if this wave survives, it could bring some showers and thunderstorms to portions of the U.S., British Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico over the next couple of days. This is not expected to develop into anything tropical, so we're not looking for any sort of tropical cyclone activity. However, it is just something to monitor at this time as we could be seeing the potential for some flooding rainfall and gusty winds from time to time. In the Eastern Pacific Basin, we have two systems with a high probability of tropical cyclone formation over the next couple of days. We have Invest Area 93E located right here where my cursor is. This has been denoted by an increase in shower and thunderstorm activity in the past 24 hours and is likely to become a tropical depression or storm within the next day or two. And again, most of these forecast models today, if we can actually put that on there, most of the forecast guidance today continues to carry this well away from mainland Mexico. This does not look to be a threat to the Baja Peninsula or any part of coastal Mexico over the next couple of days, which is certainly some good news there. And further back to the south and east of 93E, we have another system that is likely to develop over the next couple of days, part of a broader monsoon trough here. And this will likely again head off towards the west-northwest, but staying well away from portions of coastal Mexico at this point. Again, still need to watch this system, especially given that it's going to be more than about seven days out, at least for the time being. Um, but again, right now the indications are that this should stay well away from coastal Mexico or the Baja Peninsula. So as we were just talking about in the intro, Colorado State University has published their new forecast for the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season, and it is quite a doozy here. So to break it down, we have 18 named storms that are now forecast, including the couple that have already formed. So CSU is calling for 14 more named storms, nine hurricanes because we haven't had any yet and four major hurricanes with an accumulated cyclone ace index of 160. now you can see all the climatological norms here and each one of these numbers is well above respectfully the climatological mean here and that ace index west of 60 degrees is quite important because what that means is that there's going to be more impacts potentially to land areas such as the Caribbean, the southeastern United States, the Gulf of Mexico, etc. And so this is going to be something to just kind of monitor over the next couple of months. Again, this is not saying that we have to have an above average season. And to be quite frank with you, I would not be surprised to see a season that maybe ends up a little bit lower than what these numbers are. And we'll get into why here in just a second. But it is just still very important to understand that these increased in numbers here 
definitely do carry a lot of weight going forward because it means that we're going to have a more busier season than first thought and the potential for more impacts than we first thought. One of the main reasons behind the increased forecast from Colorado State University is these sea surface temperature anomalies. This is over the last 14 days from June 21st to July 4th. And this is from a 30 year climatology set from 91 until 2020. And we very clearly noticed the very warm anomalies here off the coast of Africa in this case, somewhere roughly around two and a half degrees Celsius above the long-term average. This is fairly significant because this adds a lot of energy in the underlying ocean. And that extra energy is used to fuel these tropical waves that can then develop into tropical storms and hurricanes and threaten places like the United States or the Lesser Antilles. And this very warm water up here all the way to the United Kingdom is kind of the driving force of this. This continued warmth in the canary current down here that gets transported down to the MDR is going to have an effect for how busy hurricane seasons are. And in this case, because the canary current is fairly warm and driving that warm water south, this is going to be leading to an increase and tropical cyclone activity. Uh, but there's a major but to that thing here. The but to that is going to be the developing El Nino in the eastern and equatorial Pacific here. Again, this is the sea surface temperature anomaly map from July 4th, but it kind of just gives you an idea. These very warm anomalies here in the Nino 3-4 index, well above the long-term average, but not substantially so. We're not talking about 3, 4, 5 C above the long-term average like we saw in years like 2015 and uh, 97, I believe. And again, this cooler than average uh, anomalies here off the coast of the Baja Peninsula, stretching all the way down to Hawaii, is cutting off a little bit of the, the availability for tropical cyclones to form out here in the Eastern Pacific Basin, which in turn helps out the Atlantic in a major way. And a lot of the uh, members here from the latest European forecast uh, for the ENSO here, the this doesn't have like a built-in mean, but if you just kind of would draw the mean, it's something like this. And so you can kind of see, well, technically we're getting above that two degrees Celsius here, which indicates that we're in a strong El Nino. Again, it's not going to be more than likely as strong as we first thought and certainly with the later onset this might help to at least keep the Atlantic Basin um, you know in a more favorable pattern for at least uh, really until late August or early September. So what's going on out there right now? Well to look at that let's look at the GFS 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at roughly 5,000 feet off the ground. We notice a little impulse of energy. This is the tropical wave that will be moving through the Lesser Antilles over the next couple of days. And again, tropical cyclone activity and development is not expected from this particular wave. However, we notice in the east, or not in the Eastern Pacific yet, but in the subtropical Atlantic, there might be a little subtropical cyclone uh, that may try to form up here in the next couple of days to the next week or so. Nothing official from the National Hurricane Center and certainly does not look to be a threat to any land areas. Just something to kind of monitor, see if we get any storm activity in the subtropics. And certainly that would not be unprecedented for July. But nothing coming out of the MDR, which is certainly good news. And nothing out here in the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico. And then in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we'll be monitoring these two systems that could be forming over the next couple of days that are actually likely to form. Again, right now the GFS indicates that this these two systems will not be a threat to land at all. You can see the, these systems move well away from the Baja Peninsula and mainland, mainland Mexico. So again, not really going to be too concerned about any potential for landfalling tropical cyclones here throughout the next about 10 days or so. So with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. God bless to everyone out there. Stay safe, everyone. And I will talk to you guys again some more over the next several days.